Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. My name is Chris. Today's focus is on trend lines using that in the Forex market, but we can take a look at some, at, at some other financial instruments, of course, uh, if you uh, want to, just let me know through the chat. First of all, though, be aware that this webinar is shown to a global audience, the recording as well. Please be aware of that and take a look at AdwinMarketsGlobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact the appropriate entity, entity to find out if it is suitable for you and other details. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange in global financial markets is considered high risk, may not be suitable for everyone. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer. Plus, you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right. Good morning to you. Hope that uh, you had a great weekend. Today, we're going to take a look at the majors. First of all, of course, using trend lines. Trend lines very useful in these four steps. The four steps that I use to tackle the analysis is, first of all, defining the trend and momentum. We can use trend, trend lines for that in both cases. Trends, of course, very useful. Uh, trend channels, very useful for trends. Trend lines, very useful for momentum and correction. Then we'll be looking for an opportunity like a fib or pattern or a trend line as well, very multifunctional. Then we'll be looking at filters like strong support or resistance levels that could block a trade from developing. Then if there is an interesting uh, trade and I'm looking at basically identifying at what zone I would like to trade it, how I like to trade it, and what kind of reward to risk is there to be found when that trade develops. So it's all about planning or finding the trade and then planning the trade and then trading that uh, the plan basically is uh, is all what it's uh, is all what it's about uh, in forex trading and that's basically these four steps are showing. All right, from an economic calendar point of view, we have uh, Bank of England governor speaking today. I thought also on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. And I do believe that there is a Bank of England interest rate decision this week. I thought it was Thursday, but it could be Wednesday too. Uh, normally it is Thursday. Let me double check that uh, in, the, in the meantime. But uh, it should be this week, one of those two days. All right. So that's something you definitely want to be aware of. Otherwise, you got some dollar news, for instance, here. Uh, as you can see, just check the, the calendar. We got some. Um, Lighter news, of course, as well. Something you want to be aware of. All right. Regarding the heat map, let's take a look a bit at uh, the big movers of yesterday. And uh, we see that pound yen, big move to the upside, but also a lot of volatility. So the more the currency pair is to the right, the more volatile, the higher or lower, the more movement, the more directional movement there was to up or down so pound yen moved up a lot but also moved a lot in general uh, and you can see pretty substantial movement here on the yens two and a half percent is always a really a, a big movement one percent is already a lot so yeah a lot of movement yesterday on those yens and i think we'll probably see that in the currency ranges pound and yen i would expect to be on top let's take a look yeah, look at that. Big movements there on those two pairs. The rest were a bit quiet, as you can see, relative to those two. All right, let's uh, take a look at the charts now. Enough about that. And let's take a look at the euro dollar, first of all, as always. Uh, basically, your dollar made a big fall during the Brexit announcement and uh, has it not moved that much since. It's basically staying in a range since the Brexit announcement. In fact, the pound, of course, the pound dollar has fallen, has continued with the downtrend but the euro dollar has not. And that same fib that I used actually way back then is still valid. Price is not broken above the high or the, or the low of that candle. So that candle is still kind of controlling uh, the environment. That candle, however, has seen many, many other candles after that. So it's not as strong as, as it was back in the day. From a trend line perspective, we definitely have a kind of correction going on. At first, it was a triangle. It was actually an ascending triangle like this. Price, however, broke to the downside, uh, this triangle, and uh, did make some downside movement, but it was not able to break below the 110 psychological round level. So this was a good break here for a few pips, but didn't go all too far before it hit the, the strong support level, and now it's bouncing off of that. And in fact, not only do we get a bounce off 110, we got a break of an opposite trend line 
using these stops, for instance, or, or these stops, price has broken above those resistance trend lines and is making a breakout to the upside as we speak. So this is a counter trend break. This is a counter trend the momentum break. This could be a bigger correction, a bigger ABC zigzag. That's something that I talked about yesterday in uh, my weekly Forex video recap as well, which you can find right here in technical analysis. There we go. Just go to analytics, technical analysis, and you see Nana already talking about a dollar cat W bullish breakout. And here I was talking about the decision spots in the Forex market. So the euro dollar, I was talking about the euro dollar yesterday as well. And uh, basically that there could be a bigger zigzag up to 112.50. Why? Because if you look at the momentum we had here, that could be an A. This could be a B correction. And we could get a C momentum up to that target at 112.50-ish. Or even you know, if price does extend up to the second target. All right. So from that perspective, I think that uh, this candle is is not a bad candle. It there is a bit of wick on top. Yes, that's true. But I think it's well. Let's count it to be precise. The candle is 40-ish pips. The close is 13 pips off. So we're looking at about 30% wick. 31%. My cutoff is. 30%. So it's right at that max kind of boundary. More than 30%, and you're looking at a lot of wick, and the breakout candle, therefore, is substantially weaker. The best is within 20. So it's kind of in a gray area. It's not a perfect breakout. It's not the best breakout. It's not the most horrible breakout either. So it's really sometimes you're right at 30%. What do you do? Do you take a breakout like this or not? This is one of those that is really 50-50. It's okay-ish. It's really, it's not that, uh, unfortunately, not that clear. But, uh, well, what I do like about the trade is that we got support levels close by. We got a lot of wicks here, a lot of bounces. I do see a break of this strong resistance trend line, and I see a potential up to 112.50. So what I do like about it is the reward to risk ratio here. Let me put it in simple terms. Uh, basically, we're looking at this kind of risk, but I do think that we have a potential profit of, of this. So yeah, that does not look bad. I think we're looking at about 180 <clears throat> potential, 175 reward potential. We're looking at about, well, about um, 70, 65 risk. So it is close to a three to one, I guess, a bit less than that, two and a half to one. Uh, reward to risk ratio there. So if this trade works in 50% of the cases, it's definitely worth it. You know, in the long run, it's it's positive expectancy from similar types of, of setups like this. This is a discretionary analysis, so uh, we don't have you know statistics that we're using uh, breakout trades in in this case. You know, each case is unique uh, when you trade discretionary. But I do think that from that perspective, the RTR is appealing. So that's one good thing about it. The breakout candle is not great, but it's, I guess, a bare minimum acceptable. So, yeah, that could be a trade right here with the stop loss. Then uh, below, I would go, <clears throat> let's see, where would I go? Let's take a look at the daily chart. Stop loss, I think, best below yesterday's low, 110.10. So that's a bit more actually. It's about 75 pip stop loss. This is a bit more than I said. I said 65, I think. Yeah, so a bit more. So that skews the R2R to about uh, 2.3 versus 1. Still okay. Yesterday was a bullish candle. The day before, an NFP was a doji. NFP days are always very important to analyze the daily candle to get a bit of a information. Uh, that that very important information because the NFP there's a lot of participation in NFP. NFP uh, means that a lot of banks, hedge funds, everyone is participating in a day like that to make money during the day. And the close at the end of the day gives a lot of information about how to uh, you know see follow through in the next week or more. Well, a doji like this, this one here, really indicates indecision. 
So I was expecting the potential for a zigzag to the upside. So from that perspective, and we broke yesterday's high. So we got a couple of good things as well to say that this trend line is, is toast, to put it, or, or broken, uh, you know, to put it in a different way. So another way to just, besides taking it right here, one, I guess I could also look for a bit of a pullback back to that trend line, back to support. That would even skew the R2R even, you know, into more advantage territory. And uh, we could see even better R2R. There's a bit of supply demand zone here, right? There's a bit of a indecision. And we had momentum prior to it and momentum after it. So if price hooks back to that level, I think that could be a strong bouncing spot. So another way to tackle that could be to wait for 110.50, 110.60. Just a tad of a discount there, same stop loss, but a better R2R, and a bit of a bit of a hook back before continuing. That could be another way of tackling that. All right, we've got some support trend lines as well. Uh, obviously, if those break, who knows? Throughout this week, then that could be a breakout trade to the downside. We have two trend lines to be wary of, or three maybe even. We got a horizontal support at 110. Let me make that uh, a different color because two purples does not work well. Let's make that all right, green. So we have this trend line, a upward slope trend line, horizontal trend line, and a downward slope trend line. So there's a lot of support actually, and a breakout would not be easy here. We've got 78.6 fib as well, multiple layers. So a trend, a trend line like that, or a trend zone, in fact, uh, would have to probably see a very strong candle push below it with a strong close near the low before I would consider any shorts. Um, obviously, there's a lot of support, and any weaker candle here uh, would be dangerous to trade to the downside right into those support levels. All right, so that's my uh, euro dollar breakout analysis on uh, the four hour chart. And I think it's, you know, interesting and could see a continuation. I think it's it's not a bad um, thing to, to, to trade considering um, the R2R. All right, so let's take a look and continue with the pound. Pound is also moving up. But I'll tell you why I don't think this is an interesting currency pair, and I and I don't recommend trading this to the upside. Yes, it could move higher, but I'm going to skip it, and I don't mind skipping um, some trades if uh, obviously I don't like them. Like them, that's part of the filtering process. It's part of getting awareness of the market structure and understanding if you know the the currency pair is aligned with uh, with what you're looking for or not. So, yes, it is moving up. We do see a couple of bullish candles here in a row. But no, I don't like the uh, the setup at this point, And I'll tell you why. First of all, despite the fact that price did break above this, this trend line um, and hence could be in a bigger breakout, we also have to be aware of the fact that price is in the pattern. Price is still in this consolidation pattern called the bear flag. All right. Bear flags are actually continuation signals of a downtrend price is right at the top of that bear flag so despite the counter trend break here of the light green trend line uh, yesterday um, at this point price has reached resistance and has reached the top of this bear flag and although we see a strong four hour candle and hence i think we will push a bit above it uh, i don't want to trade basically right at the trend line or even just a bit above it uh, sorry, right, not only a trend line, but it's also a bear flag. So from this perspective, uh, I don't think it's a good trade. Now, obviously, this bear flag could break, could break to the downside, could break to the upside. For me to consider the bear flag broken, I got to see a, fo a solid four-hour candle above it. I got to see a candle close that is near the high. So something like a candle like this, for instance. All right, and in that case, yeah. I'll join, I'll admit, I would say that this is not a bear flag anymore. It's broken and bulls definitely in control. I think that it would be probably best to look for a bit of retracement of that four hour candle. And I might join the upside uh, in trading a bigger zigzag, bullish zigzag, 
and a bigger correction on the pound. And I would put a fib from the bottom to the top here and try to see if we get a 38 or 50 bounce and try to trade it to the target minus 272 or minus 61.8. For the moment, though, um, you know, we, we still have to wait, right? We have to wait for that to happen. I need confirmation. I want to see that actually happen before I, you know, try to trade something, anticipate something that might not even happen. That sometimes is very appealing, uh, and traders sometimes uh, do that. Uh, that, I think, is dangerous. Obviously, I'm not saying that any trade that anticipates something is bad. But you got to have a good reason for it. For instance, let's say that we anticipated a turnaround back down at the 135 level right here. Well, I'm not saying that trading it right at 135 is bad, but you have to have good reasons. You got to get a confluence of resistance. You know, you want to see um, some clear kind of support of resistance that support it. Here, <clears throat> we have resistance so we don't want to go long into resistance we want to go short into resistance so a short at 135 could have made a lot of sense all right so it depends but the more confluence of course the better anticipating trades are and um, typically the stop losses of such a trades when you anticipate something have to be a bit wider because Price does not have to turn exactly at 135. It could be 135.20. It could be 135.40. Let's take a look at this was 135.30 in this case. So if you put a stop loss at 135.27, you just lost a trade, whereas actually it was a pretty good trade because it moved down to 128. All right. So if you wait for a confirmation and if you would have waited for this doji instead, then you could have used 135.30. Um, as a guideline to put your stop loss. All right, let's take a look. Uh, Zetan is asking for that candle, it will break the, the flag pattern, <clears throat> but it will hit the resistance. Yeah, some good observation. That's why always these counter trend trades are, are difficult. You got a bottom here, you got a supply demand zone here. So from that perspective, that could be another resistance zone to, to be cautious of. Uh, so good point. And I agree with you on that. Then, you know, we might not even correct our, our analysis because of that, because it depends where this four hour candle closes. I guess if it closes around here and we get a pullback that still respects, let's put a fib from here to here and we get a pullback into the 38.2 fib. Uh, there's still space, I guess, to the next resistance. If I wait for a candlestick reaction at the 38.2 fib, let's say something like this happens. So we get a couple of downside candles. So something like this happens. We have a breakout candle. We have a couple of correction candles. Then we get a bounce. All right. So in that case, I could put the stop loss below the 38.2 fib and the candle low. I could target the 272 target or the minus 61.8 target. Both are in that resistance zone. And I would still have a, a decent R2R -R trade with an entry here, even though it's counter trend and even though there's resistance ahead above it. So you can kind of wiggle in um, a trade there. Yes, those are riskier because I would consider the trend still down. So I think this is a higher risk trade, but you could kind of still see a potential there uh, if we're lucky. Um, but I do agree that taking profit in that zone is good because this, this seems to be a pretty sturdy resistance zone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, the likelihood of price breaking through, unfortunately, it's already happening. So um, this is now a bit after the fact. But I was planning to say, that the likelihood of price actually breaking through this flag is pretty big. And the reason why is because this four-hour candle closed near the high, which means that the momentum is pretty strong, which means the resistance will probably not hold this candle. It's a little rule that I use. I look at the strength of a candle to judge the likelihood of support resistance actually holding. 
However, all right, and I'm diving into details maybe, but just because this candle, all right, there's a good chance that price will push through this trend line doesn't mean that the bulls will be able to hold uh, and keep control after the breakout. What could happen is that this candle could turn into a wick like this. The close could be back right at the trend line or below it. That could be kind of a false break. It could turn into a pin bar. And if that happens, it could be interesting to trade the false break slash to bounce off the top of that bear flag for downside. And I might definitely um, could be very interested in looking for shorts later today if that happens. So all in all, a lot rides on this, this, this candle, in my opinion, in relationship to the bear flag <clears throat> or the channel we're seeing here. If we got a big wick, if there's a big wick on this four hour candle like this, right, with preferably a doji or a bearish close below this, that goes back below this bear flag. I think that could be an interesting short signal with a stop loss above that candle high, targeting probably the bottom of the channel or the 78.6 fib. Uh, and wait, I should do green circle for targets, sorry, and blue for entry and red for stop loss. And if it's a bullish candle, well, I already discussed that, so I don't want to <clears throat> repeat myself. But that would be then, uh, as I said, the bullish potential if we get a uh, if we get a series of confirmations where we get a candle close basically above the flag, we get a retracement and continuation without already going up to the target in one shot. Because that can happen too. That's the third scenario: is that we just get. A breakout candle, one more breakout candle, one more continuation without a retracement, and then we're already at the target before you know it. Then I would actually probably be more inclined to look for a retracement rather than continuation to the upside due to this zone. <clears throat> for the moment, as long as price basically stays below this 132, this upside I do expect will run out of steam. I don't, if I had to make a call right now, I think that this is going to run out of steam and is going to make a turn back down. So I don't expect a strong four hour candle here. I do expect weakness, uh, but you never know. Let's see, let's wait for that confirmation. My bias here in this case is based on Elliott Waves and the wave theory, and I still think that this is a wave four, but if it isn't, then we might see a bigger correction. Um, and the wave four is invalidated at 132. When price pushes above 132, the bearish scenario that I have in mind is is, that, is invalidated, is, is now more uh, valid, and I'll have to reanalyze this, and perhaps I'll come to the conclusion that we might get a bigger uh, ABC zigzag correction like this. <clears throat> all right the next one dollar yen talked about the zigzag uh correction as well and uh on monday video and i said that this could be a move up to 104.40 and we're almost there we're at 103.30 we've traveled a substantial distance all the way from 100 300 pips and got about 100 left before we hit the target there's still one more target higher than that but the first target is 104.40 and this was a, a good bounce, but also a good breakout. This trend line could have been very useful if you're looking for continuation to the upside. Uh, if you listened to yesterday's video and you're looking for a trade to the upside, then these trend lines could have helped with identifying the breakout. And uh, perhaps you managed to take a trade to the upside based on that. So those are counter trend trend lines. And uh, breaks of that often, uh, not often, but sometimes give good trades. So this already happened. Basically, at this point, this trade has worked out. From my perspective, I would say stop loss below last four-hour candle or below the, the wick before that is good to reduce the risk and capture some profit. So I think locking in here some profit is, is a good idea if you, take the, if you took the breakout trade. If you're not in that trade, I don't think there's any trendline trade to be traded to be traded right now, and I would probably just wait for a reaction at one of these targets for a potential downside. That's a FIB trade, not really a trendline trade, 
But at this moment, I think that's the only thing that is interesting on the dollar yen. But anyone who took this breakout trade, you should be in profit and you should lock in and I think move the trail stop. Or at least that's what I would do. Um, and uh, that's, uh, I think, the best at this point. Did anyone take a trade here on the dollar yen or um, the your dollar? In, in case you did, let me know. I'm always interested in... Uh, you know, seeing how you're doing. Pound yen, kind of same story here. We got a good break uh, yesterday. There was a bit of a triangle here. Two counter trend line though break, and uh, price really showing a lot of momentum at this point. Big big burst to the upside. Well, trend lines can also be useful not only for breakouts but for trail stops too. So, if you're in that trade, one way you can do, of course, is to connect these bottoms, these three bottoms, and uh, basically put the the trail stop either below this bottom, below this candle, or below the trend line. Those would be ways to trail stop an upside breakout, if you're still in that trade, because it has already moved a substantial amount, so perhaps you already uh, took that profit. Pound Yen is now reaching also some resistance levels right in here. So it too is getting into some resistance zone. Doesn't have to change, doesn't have to stop, uh, but could. And keeping an eye on these four hour candles is probably the best. As long as these four hour candles are, are bullish, closing relatively near the high, then this could push on and just break through that resistance zone. At this point, I don't see any trade I would like to discuss regarding the pound yen or euro yen because it's in the momentum. Maybe on a lower time frame, let's check it out. You see, at this point, it's really pushing and pushing. And the only thing that might have been tradable earlier today was this trend line break right here. There was a bit of consolidation here. Obviously, the first break, the counter trend break down in here. All in all, this has been just pushing and pushing without hardly any break except small breaks here. We have the trend lines here and here and not even here. This is just almost, it is kind of a small zone, but no trend line. Aussie USD pushing higher as well. Aussie very strong uptrend at this point uh, because of the break that's happening right now. It was in an indecision triangle. I didn't like the Aussie though in my recap video because of the triangle. But the candles are pretty substantially bullish. So we're very close to breaking these resistance trend lines. Either we broke it now already or we're breaking it with this one. So if we get a good candle at the end of this day on the Aussie and the candle is a bit bigger and ends up somewhere like this, that looks like a good breakout candle to me. Uh, a bit of retracement halfway, and I think that could be a good long with the stop loss below the low of today and targeting probably previous resistance 77.50 and 78.30 all right kiwi dollar actually is bullish but does have a resistance trend line at a weaker angle than the support which makes it look a bit like a rising wedge actually it is looking like a rising wedge so i would not be interested in longs on uh, the kiwi unless it breaks this uh, rising wedge or breaks below the rising wedge. So for that to happen, I need a break basically of this resistance. Well, for that to happen, basically, I need a candle that looks something like this. Retracement back to the 38 fib when fibbing the candle itself or the 50. Could be a bouncing spot, stop loss below the candle and targeting Probably targeting 75, 75, 25. All right. So those are but those are daily candles uh, at this moment. Well, we can take a look at lower time frames, but you see a lot of momentum at this point. 
on a 50 minute chart, you know, you can look at trend lines like this, for instance, for breakouts as well. Here we see basically a bull flag. Why? Because we had momentum prior to that to the upside. Then we're seeing a slow um, kind of correction downwards like this. That's typical for a flag, like a bull flag. There was also a mini flag within the flag. There was actually a bear flag within that bull flag, but the bear flag actually broke to the upside because the bigger flag uh, ultimately uh, was more important. All right, so the break here, the breakout here, breaking not only a mini bear flag, but also, of course, the bigger bull flag. And we saw a good continuation to the upside. So those are sometimes trades you can pick up on lower time frames as well. Trend lines uh, are not only useful on one hour, four hour, but equally so on 15. Just be careful that uh, you, you pick, you choose uh, good spots. Got to be a bit more critical, perhaps, on lower time frames. They're also good on dailies. It just takes longer, of course, to uh, for things to materialize. All right. Besides those euro odd and pound odds and, and and stuff like that, you know, and crosses like that, I should say, they are in heavy trends to the downside too. As you can see right here, every time frame we got lower lows. Every time frame we see price pushing further. So. Yeah, one of those situations where we're again in a momentum. Now, unfortunately, the reason why I actually chose trend lines was because I saw uh, yesterday when I decided to, to you know line up the the webinars and um, make the recap video, I saw a lot of trend lines that I wanted to discuss today. So I thought that could be a good topic for today. Trend lines seem appropriate for today's focus, but unfortunately, kind of the breaks. Um, happening uh, just a tad earlier than our uh, live session here but uh, yeah you can obviously see some a lot of examples of trend lines and uh, trend lines of course not only good for breakouts but for channels too if we connect these tops for instance like this you can see a good downtrend channel with four hits. We can connect the bottoms like that, and we have four or five hits. And we see we still have some space down to 145 before we hit the bottom of the channel again. All right, so now when momentum like this is happening, uh, I think the only thing that is possible to do is probably zoom into a five or 50 minute chart and, and look for retracement. And one of the tools I use for retracements is actually an oscillator. Let me add that quickly. There we go. So for instance, the Aussie, the Euro odd, we're all seeing strong breakouts to the, in this case, to the upside, Euro odd to the downside, strong uh, Aussie breakouts, basically. So it's not tradable right now. The breakouts have already occurred. But one way is to, to wait for retracement and continuation, basically. And what I like to do is use the five-minute chart for that. Basically, wait for this to go back to the zero line. Very similar to what it did here, actually. You see the momentum here? You see a correction, very light correction here, going sideways, basically. And in the meantime, the oscillator going back to the zero line. So when you see something like this, when you see price, strong momentum, even on a five-minute chart, and you see a strong push on the oscillator. But then you see the oscillator going back to the zero line and price hardly moves anywhere. That's vital information. It's key, key information. What it tells us is that we got momentum to the upside. We got strong candles pushing higher in this case, but the retracement, the counter trend move is flat. And how do we know that the counter trend move has finished? Because the oscillator has gone back to the equilibrium, to the restart point. But despite the fact that the oscillator has gone back to that restart point, back to the neutral, let's say to the mean, to, to the average, price has gone nowhere. Price has gone sideways. So that means despite the retracement, there were no sellers. So if there are no sellers, 
this is just a consolidation before price continues with the previous momentum. And look at that. Once we get the break uh, of this resistance, we got to push higher again. So that's how the oscillator helps with identifying completions of pullbacks. That's why I want to use the oscillator again here as well. I would look for retracement. In this case, I wouldn't be surprised if the, there is a bit of a more impulsive re re correction, basically, in ABC. In this case, obviously, this is a flat correction, right? Price is going sideways. There are two types of corrections, sideways corrections and more impulsive corrections like an ABC, like this, all right? Uh, in both cases, the oscillator goes back to the zero line. Uh, well, not always. Sometimes with flat corrections, basically, price continues sooner than that. But okay, in this case, it did. So if we get an ABC correction like that, and the oscillator has gone back to the zero line, and we get a bounce in here, that could be a good continuation on the odd USD. All right, as long as the four-hour candles are looking like this, it's, uh, it remains, I think, a decent idea to look for a corrective bull flag or an ABC zigzag to look for continuations. That will happen later today, but that will not happen sometime soon. There will be some time you know, for it to correct. But uh, if it does something like that, I think there's a good continuation potential in uh, the end of London, the last part of the second part of London, the first part of New York. All right, now the pound uh, odd and pound zealand look a bit different. In fact, if I had to choose between uh, the Aussies here, between your odd, pound odd, odd USD, I think the odd USD upside is the best because the odd downside is moving a bit choppily. So that is showing uh, some uh, struggle here, I think, relative compared to this downside. Also, the pound odd actually is showing pretty strong momentum up, which means that there could be a zigzag. And look at this. We got upside here, but we got flatness here. So that could be one of the indications that price might make a bigger correction, uh, even though price is actually in a downtrend at this point. So let's add the oscillator to get a bit more info on that. And on the hourly chart, uh, we do see about a double divergence, I think, at this point. So I wouldn't be surprised after double divergence to see uh, a bigger correction. The target of that is this uh, long-term moving average. So we could see a zigzag. Price is going sideways. So from that perspective, a trend line break here uh, could see continuation up to 174. I would probably use this trend line. All right. Now, this is a good one hour trend line. Why? Because the, the exact, the entire, I should say, trend line fits on the screen. Of course, this is not a good five minute trend line because part of this trend line is not visible on the five minute chart. Actually, let's see, something doesn't add up here. It, all right. Well, anyhow, you get the picture that um, that you know the five-minute chart, the five-minute um, chart would not be able to handle such a trend line. It's too big, and if it doesn't fit on the the chart, then it uh, it's not a good trend line for that time frame. This is a a good one hour. It could even be a good thirty-minute chart or trend line, right? Because it still fits within that thirty-minute framework. It's not a good four hour one because the trend line is a bit too small, right? It's not a good daily because you hardly see the trend line. You get the picture, right? You want to use a trend line on a time frame that it's a decent visibility. All right. So from this perspective, there might be even a counter trend break to the upside. If pound, however, 
I think it is important to see Pound manage to break um, above 132 or at least above this bear flag before probably trading the Pound to the upside because otherwise it could be a bit risky. And, uh, you know, this could fail to, to make a zigzag. Uh, corrections, although they seem likely, do not always happen, even though there is double divergence, even though there is, um, it looks very good like a zigzag. Price could also first make a downside correction before it makes the upside. That's something you want to be aware of. All right, dollar cat is indeed in a W pattern, as Ned has already explained, and we're actually challenging your resistance line as we speak. Price trying to poke above it. There's a, I would say, a bit of a slower price action on this uh, dollar cat at this point, and you can see it as a triangle as well. And this breakout is iffy. Why? Because the trend line uh, is not fully broken yet with this particular four-hour candle. The four-hour candle is pushing a bit above it, but the majority of the candle is not above it. So for me, that's not a full-fledged breakout as yet. If the next uh, daily candle does push above it and does close above this high, then I would consider it a breakout. And I think a, a basically a retracement of today's or tomorrow's uh, bullish breakout candle and a continuation seems likely. All right, but at this moment, I don't think the breakout is completed yet. That would have to be the next candle. All right, folks, so let me recap that for you. I think we looked at uh, all the majors. First of all, if you have any trend lines, uh, questions, if you have any um, anything you would like to ask me regarding the setups that I just talked about for myself, uh, anything regarding the analysis, let me know. Or if you want to uh, ask my opinion uh, about, a about a trade that you might have in mind, just let me know. In the meantime, let me give you the recap about what I'm thinking for the market today. I'm thinking that we're going to see a zigzag on the euro dollar to the upside. We're going to see a larger correction up to 112.50, perhaps even higher to 113.50 extension as price basically makes a correction on the euro dollar like this to the upside. I, I was saying that the trade uh, at here was a potential for, for myself or upon the retracement down to 110.50 with a stop loss at 110. 15 price in the meantime, however, has moved up some 40 pips and is continuing to the upside without that retracement. Um, so the retracement could still happen. Let's take a look at the five minute chart. And you can see momentum on a five minute chart. Basically, even in five minute chart, you can use trend lines. Look at that trend line right here momentum. Probably the oscillator also going back. Let's add the oscillator very quickly for the fun of it. To see how that works. You see? Momentum, momentum. Price reached the trend line. Sorry, price reached the zero line. So when it reaches the zero line, take a look at the correction and try to understand uh, is it is it a fast correction? Is it a reversal or is it some consolidation? And when we start to look at this downside, where I have the blue, blue uh, arrow we see a clear kind of chart pattern. We see a bull flag. We see a slow uh, consolidation. And it's nothing near a reversal at this point. So it's indicating a pause. And once that pause breaks, there's a good chance that price will continue with the previous momentum. So at this point, we're seeing a follow through of that. So I think that we could see a correction and a continuation on the euro dollar as well. Uh, so on, from a four-hour four perspective, I think there's still a decent chance that price could get down back to 110.80 before it continues up to 112.50. Now, 112.50 is more of a swing target, by the way. So if you're looking more for a intraday exit spot, then pivot points are good. Uh, the pivot point R3, for instance is uh, at 111.90 and five is at 111.65 those would be good intraday exit spots if you're looking for a swing exit spot i think 112.40 is probably better all right now be aware that uh, 112.50 is 
in a bit yeah in a certain way a bit ambitious because we do have horizontal resistance coming in as well of course around 111.75 now considering the pivot points around 111.65 111.90 it could be wise to take profit at around 111.65 uh, indeed also not only because of the pivot points but also because of these resistance levels all right asim is saying i'm going to trade at 111.20 should i quit this trade uh and my answer is if i would be in that trade i would probably not stay in but it also depends where you have the stop loss it depends where you took the trade what system you're using or is it a discretionary trade so the there are kind of some you know, other factors that I don't know, which make it difficult for me to give a full kind of answer. But I do think there's a good chance for price to get up to 111.70, perhaps break above that and go to 112.50. And uh, that's not 100% guaranteed, though. Obviously, price could stop right here and, and fall down to 105. And it would be the worst moment to exit. But considering the momentum that we have here at this point, I think there's a higher chance, a decent chance, the price is going to go with that flow during today. All right. Pound USD, as I said, if there's a false breakout, I wouldn't mind taking a short. But if there's a, a good breakout, a risky counter trend trade up to the resistance zone of 132.20, 133 is possible, but that could be again a turning spot as well uh, for downside. Dollar yen, no trend line trades there, just fib trades potentially at these targets as a retracement. But be careful because if price gets to those targets and then starts to go sideways, the same thing applies what I just said about the five minute chart. We have momentum to the upside. So if the correction is flat or sideways, then we could expect upside. If you're in a short, where price is going sideways, get out of that trade. Don't stick in that because there's a good chance the price will break through to the upside and take your trade out for a loss. And you don't want to lose a trade on that when you have plenty of time to move these stop loss to break even and get out for nothing, small profit, or at least break even. All right, so be aware of that. Um, the, you know, the shorts have basically resistance levels to work with for potential trades, but you don't want to stick to those trades forever uh, and watch price go sideways without realizing that that's actually a potential setup for upside continuation. All right, moving on. Um, basically, Aussie upside looks pretty good, I would say, on the five-minute chart. And otherwise, I think that was it. Those were the most interesting a potential potential trades i think for today as far as i remember that was the quick recap i don't see any questions at this point so let me quickly I'll tell you about the webinars we have i have something i think that you will really like on thursday we're going to take a look at indicators uh and uh that will be on the typical pro learning lab how to trade effectively with popular chart indicators so i hope to see you then Netit has his uh, price action trading school tomorrow, as usual. And tomorrow we also have strategy, of course. We're going to take a look once more at wave trading. So I hope to see you in these three webinars. Wish you all great trading. We can take a look at DAX, absolutely. Z10 is uh, wondering about DAX. Let's take a look right now. All right, let me refresh this template first of all. All right, we got a couple of good trend lines here. We got a resistance trend line connecting these tops. We also have a support trend line connecting these bottoms. And it's okay to draw multiple trend lines. So we can draw both these trend lines, one connecting the exact wicks, one connecting basically, um, or one actually cutting through part of the wick, but that's okay. So that's a triangle. It's a contracting triangle. We got uh, 
lower highs and higher lows. So on the DAX, from a long-term perspective, we need a break below these trend lines to have a, a strong directional move. But if we zoom in, let's take a look if we see something else. Looks very much like the euro dollar, doesn't it? Uh, we see strong momentum during Brexit to the downside, but we're seeing a recovery, which could be a zigzag. And from a fib perspective, I would say these targets are basically uh, potential turning spots, 10,000 or 9993 and 10,220. Now, the first target could only be a, a pausing spot before going to the next target. So at this point, I think that the price is pretty close to this target, but there could be a bit of space left on lower time frames. Then we'll have to see how price responds to that target. If it goes sideways, there could be one more push up. If there's some momentum to the downside, then I would look for a bear flag and then trade it uh, lower again. So ultimately, looking for a reaction to minus 272 target. If it's a bull flag, one more push up to the next target. If it's momentum, I'm looking for a bear flag and then a break of that flag for downside. I know that might seem a bit complicated, but at this point, the landscape is, is twofold. So I really want to see a bit more confirmation. I want to see some patterns before I would uh, analyze it down or up. Now, I don't trade the DAX myself, so this is just analysis from my perspective. Uh, I am going to take a look at that in the near future to see uh, how it behaves a bit more. I want to do some research in it, but at this point, uh, I haven't done that as yet. All right, folks. So S&P probably would look similar. No, it doesn't. Actually, it's pushing this week. It's really pushing above the uh, 2130. It was challenging it already last week and the week before. And now it's really uh, pushing above it. This could be a breakout if the weekly candle holds. We could see a breakout and there could be a continuation for a new higher high up to 2200, I would say. Maybe even higher, but I mean, let's take it step by step. But I would like to see a weekly candle above it, or at least a daily candle. So that would be today or this week. Yesterday, we didn't have it. So it is a very interesting uh, point. And considering the lack of bearish candles at this moment, I wouldn't be looking for a bounce at the top. I wouldn't be looking for a failure as yet. It could fail, but there's no candlestick kind of um, confirmation for that or evidence for that. But there's no evidence for upside as, as yet either because price is not fully broken, I would say, the top as yet. All right, folks. Well, thanks so much for those questions. Great uh, to take a look at those indices as well. And uh, tomorrow we can take a look at it from a wave perspective as well, if you like. Just to remind me if I forget, and we can do that. Hope to see you in the upcoming webinars, and above all, wish you great trading. See you all soon, folks. Cheers.